You're watching Seahawks Today, powered by Chat Sports. Tyler Jones here with you. Thanks for joining us as we have a new report from ESPN detailing their takeaways from insider Jeremy Fowler on Seahawks training camp. His takeaways will show you what they are, let you hear from some of your favorite Seahawks, react to it and more coming up in just a matter of moments. Tyler Jones here with you. Appreciate you joining us. Some exciting news yesterday. Connor Williams is the newest member of the Seattle Seahawks. If you're excited about the Connor Williams signing, like the video, do your part, show some love. Who knows? He may be watching his family, his friends. We want to make our voices heard loud and clear that we're rooting on Connor Williams, that we're glad to have him here in Seattle. Like the video, do your part, and we'll get started with today's show. ESPN's Jeremy Fowler, NFL insider, visited Seahawks training camp within the last few days and gave an extensive breakdown of what he learned about this Seattle Seahawks team and where they're at right now at this point in training camp, looking ahead to the first preseason game coming up on Saturday night. Number one, the role in Geno's, for Geno Smith in Ryan Grubb's offense is going to be very enhanced, comparatively speaking, to what it was in the old regime under Shane Waldron, Geno Smith saying the following, I know I'm one of the best. That's not just me saying that. It's proven. It's on tape. I think for me, I can't focus on those type of things. I have to be where my feet are and be the best player I can be. Fowler then went on to say, when talking about Geno Smith, whether he makes another jump will hinge on his mastery of Grubb's system. Uh, which is a spread it out passing attack. Smith plans to carry a heavy burden at the line of scrimmage with freedom to dictate terms of the offense based on what he sees. And as Fowler goes on to note, with great power comes great responsibility. Geno Smith is being handed the keys to this offense, and they are giving him the authority, folks. This is not a stretch. This was right there in the article that Jeremy Fowler talked about, they are giving him the power similar to what Peyton Manning used to do with the Denver Broncos and with the Indianapolis Colts where he could audible at the line. If he saw something he didn't like, he could change it immediately. That was his call, his decision to make. And for Peyton Manning, that worked out more times than not. That's the type of power that they are giving Geno Smith in this Ryan Grubb offense. So it's not just about making plays but it's also about reading defenses and seeing things at the line of scrimmage before the snap. When you look at this Seahawks offense that Ryan Grubb's bringing in, it's a mix of tempo, a lot of screen passes, mix gap schemes, zone blocking, horizontal and vertical stretches, spread the field with the run. They want to be aggressive, and they need Geno Smith to have his eyes on things before the snap to make sure they're in the best position to succeed. The Seahawks are trying to get Geno Smith back to the form that he was in 2022, if not even better than what he was before. That season when he won the NFL's Comeback Player of the Year, he threw for 30 touchdowns, over 4,200 yards, a completion percentage near 70%. If they can get that version and then a little extra on top of the offense visuals, if you will, from Geno Smith maximizing what this team can do, then they're going to be in really good shape. So, knowing that the Seahawks are giving that much power to Geno Smith, do you trust Geno Smith with that type of responsibility? It's our pinned comment today. Type T for trust, D for don't. Weigh in. Let us know what you think. Number two, according to Jeremy Fowler, the Seahawks clearly want Jackson Smith and Jigba to be the number two option at wide receiver. Look, they have some good players at the wide receiver spot with DK Metcalf there, Tyler Lockett, Jake Bobo, and others. But they are telling JSN, it is your time. We want you to be that guy for the Seahawks and take that big step forward. He's had a very good offseason, but can he put himself in position to have that defined role as that number two receiver and set himself up going forward? That's what they want to see. More from Jeremy Fowler. Jackson Smith and Jigba ranked third in Seahawks receiving last year, 628 yards, but I expect that to change. 
ordering the Seahawks receivers is tricky because Tyler Lockett's savvy even as he turns 32 in September will keep him relevant, but it seems like Smith and Jigpo will be, at the very least, the number two option behind DK Metcalf. When I asked Smith whom he throws to on a key third down, he said whoever is open but conceded that Metcalf in any one-on-one matchup is hard to ignore as a first option. And that's fine. DK can be the first option. But all three wide receivers, they're going to get the ball, right? We know that. But the Seahawks need to be in a position where they can trust JSN because let's be honest here, we're still waiting on Geno's, on uh, DK Met- Metcalf's contract situation to play out. We think he's going to get extended, but Tyler Lockett, it's likely his last season. The only wide receiver you know for certain, without a doubt, that's going to be here a long time is Jackson Smith and Jigba at this point. So, JSN, it's your time. Your time is now. You need to be the guy that this offense can trust because you're the one that they've put the most stock in that they are buying into to be kind of the face of this receiving core, if you will, for many years to come. What wide receiver is going to have a bigger year in 2024? Will it be Tyler Lockett or will it be JSN? And I know we love Tyler Lockett. He has been good to us here in Seattle over the years. But it's time to hand over that torch. We need JSN to step up and be that guy. Type JSN for JSN, TL for Tyler Lockett. Let us know in the comment section below. Today's show is sponsored by Game Time. Game Time is the place to go for last-minute tickets for the best seats and the lowest prices guaranteed. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. Save up to 60% off buying last-minute for sports, concerts, comedy shows, theater productions, and more. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. The link is in the comments and the description of today's video. Very easy to use, folks. Pick the seat you want, get the visual, and then you're checking out with Apple Pay, Google Pay, Venmo, all major credit card providers. Check out Game Time today. Number three in the ESPN takeaways was Devin Witherspoon and his leadership role that he's taking on within this Seahawks defense. And we know that Devin Witherspoon is a hell of a football player, but now it goes beyond that. He's becoming the voice of the defense, the de facto leader, if you will, with the changing of the guard. Now with no Quandre Diggs, no Jamal Adams, no Bobby Wagner, This is Devin Witherspoon's defense now, and that has been made abundantly clear this offseason. Fowler saying the following. The Seahawks' best teams had emotional leaders on defense. Think Cam Chancellor, Richard Sherman, and K.J. Wright. The lead option for the next leader for the defense is cornerback Devin Witherspoon. The Seahawks believe teammates gravitate towards him, and his fiery personality was on full display on the field and on the sidelines. Witherspoon can play in the slot, or on the outside, expect Seattle to use him in both spots this season. Look, we already know he's a great player. But now, being that vocal leader of this defense, that makes him even better, even more valuable to this team if he can be that leader, if he can be that voice. And to do it in just his second year, I've said this before, and I'll say it again, I think Devin Witherspoon's going to be a captain. I think he's going to have that C on his chest when this season begins with just everything we've heard, not only the talent level, but just how he carries himself. And think about this, folks. It's a night and day difference from what we talked about at this time last year when he showed up late for training camp. He was holding out, trying to get more guaranteed money, and then he ended up injured, didn't play in the first regular season game. Devin Witherspoon, credit where credit's due, he's turned to 180 at this point. I love it from Devin Witherspoon, and his best is still yet to come, folks. Watch party season is almost here on Seahawks Today. Yours truly, along with Smitty, will be live coming up on Saturday night 
for the Seahawks matchup with the LA Chargers. And we are trying to get to 53,500 subscribers before kickoff coming up on Saturday. Join us. Our coverage begins 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. YouTube.com slash Seahawks TV. Subscribe now, and we will see you on Saturday night. Number four on the takeaways from ESPN, we turn our attention to the tight end position. There are high expectations for Noah Fant. Noah Fant is back with a new contract, got paid a lot of money, specifically guaranteed money. And now, with the Seahawks not having Colby Parkinson, not having Will Disley, they are asking a lot of Noah Fant, and his role is about to change. Remember, we've talked about this a decent amount here on this channel over the last couple of months. The previous regime in the Pete Carroll, Shane Waldron era, they ignored the tight end spot. It didn't matter if it was Noah Fant, Greg Olson, Jimmy Graham, you name it. They didn't really care about the tight end position. Ryan Grubb, Mike McDonald, that changes, and they need a lot out of Noah Fant. Jeremy Fowler saying the following. Noah Fant is coming off career lows in catches, 32, and yards, 414. But the Seahawks are hopeful that the tight end eclipses those in a big way in 2024. Grubb's passing attack should help him. I think he's our best-kept secret, said Geno Smith. I think they're going to use him more effectively as, think about this, when you look at the tight end room, if we're going to be honest with y'all, he's the only reliable option when it comes to the receiving game. Barner's a blocking tight end. Brown's a blocking tight end. Jack Westover's a UDFA. We don't even know if he's going to make the team, although he's a receiving tight end. They expect a lot out of Noah Fan, And the version that we saw in 2023 where he didn't get to the end zone once, only got targeted in the red zone twice, that's not going to fly. We need him to have his best season yet, and I think he will. But it's also worth noting, Fant left Tuesday's practice with a foot injury. We'll keep tabs on that, and hopefully Noah Fant's okay, but that all remains to be seen at this point in time. What's your confidence level of Noah Fant? Scale it for me, 1 through 10. How are you feeling about the Seahawks tight end? Do you think he's going to have a big year in 2024? Let me know. I'm going with about a 7, to be honest with you. I like Noah Fant. He helped win me a fantasy championship when he was on Denver squad a couple years ago. I know what he's capable of. Let's see if he can make it happen. Weigh in. Let us know what you think. Last on our takeaways from the ESPN report from Jeremy Fowler, we go back to the wide receiver position as Jake Bobo and, yes, D. Eskridge have stepped up. I know it sounds crazy, but listen to this. The Seahawks have a major battle at backup receiver. Position numbers four through nine are up for grabs. Jake Bobo is making a serious case for a top spot, and the team believes former second-round pick D. Eskridge has come to play this camp. Now, we told you a couple days ago about the scrimmage the Seahawks had uh, there on Saturday. And the star of the show was Jake Bobo. He was outstanding. And we've seen in the past, you recall, training camp last year, the preseason and everything, Jake Bobo was great. So I'm not surprised. I think Jake Bobo is going to continue to elevate his play. D. Eskridge, I've heard this song before. Remember last offseason when all we heard about was Man, D. Eskridge finally looks the part. This could be his breakout season. And then he was nowhere to be seen. So I'll believe it when I see it when it comes to D. Eskridge. But the good news is this receiving core, they got some options, folks. They got some dudes. Not just DK, not just Tyler Lockett, not just JSN, but Jake Bobo. I like Chenault coming in from Carolina. Young is a solid player. Maybe D. Eskridge finally gets it done. There's a reason to be optimistic that this passing attack is going to be pretty lethal, folks. And Jake Pobo, guarantee, bank it right now. Get your bets in in Vegas, whatever it may be, or bet U.S. because we're chat sports, you know. That Jake Pobo is going to see his numbers maybe even double from what it was. He'll have more targets, more catches, more yards, more touchdowns, and you're going to love it. And we would be remiss if we didn't do this before the end of today's show, folks. If you want more Jake Bobo this season, you know what to do. Spam hashtag more Bobo in the comments. More Bobo, more Bobo, more, more, more Bobo. Get it in the comments section. Show some love to Jake Bobo. Let's get some more Jake Bobo this season. 
If you enjoyed today's show, like the video, show some love to Connor Williams. We certainly appreciate it. I'm Tyler Jones. We'll see you next time right here on Seahawks Today.